A few years ago, I killed five monarch butterfly caterpillars when I tried to get one to grow into a marvelous adult butterfly. You see, I had never seen a butterfly born or crawl out of a cocoon in my entire life. Never actually saw one, so I decided to try to do so. How hard could it be? After all, I had raised two beautiful, smart daughters. At least I had helped to raise two beautiful, smart girls. Okay, maybe I was around as they were growing up. And they are more complicated than a butterfly, right? So how hard could it be? I went out to find some tiny, beautiful butterflies. But there is no such thing. What there are are grubby little worms, caterpillars with hair sprouting all over them, candy striped, orange, yellow, and black, flapping antennas, skittish character, hundreds of creepy tiny little feet, black nose, and a mouth with hedge clippers for teeth. Their diet was a simple one, the milkweed plant. The milkweed plant, once considered nothing more than a weed, is notable because it has this pod with thousands of seeds in it that float like fluffy parachutes. Were loads of fun when you were a kid and you could release clouds of them in the air. I kind of feel like I did my part to spread the seeds and promulgate the species. If you cut off or break the stem of the plant, a milky white fluid comes out. And most kids know or soon find out that it is sticky. It does not taste like milk at all. In fact, it will probably make you sick. Although I am sure that someone bottles it and sells it in a health food store, claiming that it will cure whatever ails you. It would be easy to search for the caterpillars, so I thought. All you had to do was find a patch of milkweed. But no, I searched and searched and searched. I found two caterpillars in Orillia when I went to the Mariposa Folk Festival. Being at that particular folk festival was ironic. I'll let you figure out why. Named them after my daughters, put them in a bag in the trunk of my car where they died. Later, I found one north of Oakville, took it home and put it on my milkweed plant, the one that I bought from a local nursery. It did not like that particular variety of plant that I bought from the nursery. Who knew? They were so fussy. It stopped eating, dropped off, and died. I found one in Michigan and put it and some of the milkweed leaves into a coffee cup. It tried to crawl out, but when I drove, it settled down, much like a child, and chewed on the milkweed leaves that I had stuffed into the cup. When I got home, though, late that night and unloaded the car, it dropped out of the cup, onto the driveway, and I stepped on it, terminating its life rather dramatically. Five down. But I was not satisfied with the trail of destruction that I was leaving behind. It had become somewhat of a mission, or at least an obsession, which meant that I stopped thinking about the consequences or how foolish it was. Then I got lucky, finding two on the beach in Burlington. I brought them home, and they feasted on a branch of the milkweed plant I had snipped off. Like the book Hungry Caterpillar, which I now have a greater appreciation for, they ate, and ate, and ate, grew large and larger and larger, eating 
and eating without stopping. They got fatter and juicier and plumper. I find that they can eat an entire milkweed leaf in less than five minutes and reach 2,700 times their original weight. And incidentally, I also noticed that they pooped. Technically, that's called frass. Untechnically, waste or still poop. They produce a lot of it. I wasn't surprised. All beings poop. It's just that you don't usually see so much of it coming from such a little animal. Tiny little pellets, just like pepper, many tiny pellets all over the place. One day I noticed that one of the caterpillars seemed to be following, then chasing the other one along the stems. I wasn't sure what was going on, but one of the caterpillars suddenly went missing. I think the other caterpillar killed and ate it. That's some hungry caterpillar. I read that they can be cannibals, so that was something new for me to consider. I am not surprised, though, considering their voracious, relentless appetites, though. A few days later, the remaining caterpillar attached its end to the underside of a leaf and seemed to hang there, lifeless. I thought it had died, but then, when I wasn't looking, it was sheathed by a shiny green, almost translucent, transparent chrysalis, like a plastic pod. It remained like that for days. Nothing seemed to be happening, and nothing moved. Again, when I wasn't looking, the butterfly emerged. It happened one morning when I was out for an hour. I actually missed the moment. But I considered its life a success. It was beautiful. For a few hours it remained immobile, occasionally raising its wings, and then I helped it outside, where it rested for a few minutes, occasionally opening up and waving its rigid wings as if it was exercising, and then it flew off. I think it returned and flew around briefly, landing here and there, and then left. I hope that it ended up heading on the headwinds towards Mexico, and it, or its progeny, nested on a tree there and maybe returned the next year. But I doubt it. Instinct took it to Mexico, but I don't think its little brain would bring it back to the house. I don't think I will try to do that again. I don't need to, and I don't think nature or the species can survive my clumsy intervention. However, I feel heartened when, a few days later, I come across a blossoming bush where hundreds of the monarch butterflies were topping up on nectar as they prepared for their pilgrimage south. Just maybe, the butterfly I had just released.